lately, the Dream Blaster boards have gained popularity in the retro gaming community. They're a modern replacement for old, scarce and now expensive MIDI wave table boards. In a nutshell, by adding this optional daughter card to your Sun Blaster card, you were adding real synthesizer capabilities to your computer. Usually, a big improvement from the standard Yamaha OPL, if you even had one. We all have our preferences. I won't go into the details around its performance on PC, but rather explore how to connect them on Atari. You could get more expensive X3M from Serta Shop that have MIDI port, but where's the fun in this more expensive off-the-shelf solution? The whole challenge here is to make some circuit that could take the MIDI signal and make it usable for the Dream Blaster S2, for example, as I like the very compact form factor. Luckily, there's an article on Electra from 1997 that explained how you could convert that MIDI current loop into a TTL signal used by this board. For this, we'll need to build our circuit. The bomber is roughly $5. I used a dead Arduino just for the USB port and the 5V regulator. It has absolutely no other purpose in the circuit. Also to be noted that the Dream Blaster cards don't require the plus and minus 12V that the original design had, most likely for the original Wave Blaster audio amplification. So we can skip those pins. At first, I thought I could also save on cost by skipping the buffer IC, but I had no luck with the impedance. I had to go with the original design. Alright, once put together, it worked right away. I made a few tests playing sample songs with both the S2 and X2. Take a listen. Now, the original intent was to use it with some MIDI music creation software, and Atari is my go-to machine. You see, unlike the modern USB devices having tons of abstraction layers, drivers, and software processing the data, each of those steps ultimately generating latency, the Atari had a dedicated MIDI controller tied directly to the CPU. As a result, there's virtually no noticeable latency between the piano key being pressed and the note being played on my speakers. Let's analyze the system's performance. I took the oscilloscope and measured the latency of the Atari running Cubase by probing the MIDI in and out ports. We can measure just over one millisecond delay, and that's including Cubase processing the MIDI signal. For the Dream Blaster, if we're looking at the delay between the end of the MIDI transmission and the beginning of the sample playback, we're just shy of one millisecond. Now, with the MIDI frame taking roughly one millisecond to transmit, if we're looking at the whole system, it takes 3 milliseconds between the key press and the sample being played. Pretty impressive, I say. If we're doing the math to put this in perspective, it's the same amount of time it takes for the sound of my speakers to get to my ears when they're one meter away from me. If you're interested in the Dream Blaster, I'll put the link in the description. I hope you find this video interesting, and as always, thanks for watching.